Okay, I've got this image. Kisa, this one's for you. I'll show you how to do this real quick. Well, it's not going to be quick. It's going to be long, but, you know. Um, we're going to take this image and we're going to color separate it, but because it's got so much noise in the background, all of that stuff there is noise and it's ugly. We don't want it. We're going to move this to another page, copy it, and... Edit, paste it. So now we've got to try to remove some of the noise that's in the background. And I'm going to show you guys something. If you go up here and you hit effects and use this little color mixer, you can set CMYK. So your output channel is yellow. This is showing you everything in your design that is yellow. Okay. Um, what's Cheyenne, what would be magenta if you printed it, and what would be black. Right now this all looks like mud, so I know that it's not good to use. So let's go in and let's just hit cancel. First thing I'm going to do, a lot of times you can brighten your image or you can use your uh, tone curve tool to try to go in and take some of the noise off of the image. I like to use this tone curve. Um, and you see it disappears there. Okay. It's not really good still because we're, we're zoomed in. But you don't see all of that static up there. Okay. So let's zoom out. Let's just take this and let's save this. We're going to do a bunch of saving and converting and all that stuff doing this, working with this. So we're going to take this. Now we're going to convert this over to a bitmap. And we're going to convert to a CMYK. Should have did a, a 600, but let's see if we convert it to a 600. Um, 600 is just better. Doesn't mean it's going to do anything, too much of anything, but now I'm going to go in and I'm going to just really quick look at the top, look at the curve on my channel mixer and see if it did anything. And I got it too big. I want to go out, out, out. I removed a little bit of that noise. But I still got a lot, so what we're going to do, we're going to keep it moving. Okay. So let's go in. Now I've got this image. Um, the best thing for me to do is not to just to trace this the way it is. Um, I could screen print from this just like it is now. Um, I could go in and color separate my channels and then send this out over to, um, to print. But I want it to be a little cleaner, a little crisper. So a lot of times I'll go in and I'll vectorize stuff and then I'll go back and bitmap it. And then uh, convert it and print it how I want it to print. And that's what I'm going to do this time. So let me select this image and figure out what I want to do. Go ahead and hit Control D, duplicate that image. Move a copy over to the side. I love to move copies over to the side. So what I'm going to do is I want to see if I can trace this and convert it to black and white. You don't want to do it uh, by going to bitmap, convert to black and white. It won't give me as good of a trace as I'm needing. Let's open this up. Okay. So I've got my channel docker open. And I can look at this if I was going to do just a straight CMYK. Uh, process print on a white shirt this would probably be fine and it would work but we've got to do this on a gray we could do a solid under base and then CMYK it and be done with it uh, but we're going to show you how to do it a different way today so this is these are your CMYK channels if you take off a color that's our blue okay so it shows you how this is printed that takes off the magenta, that takes off the yellow, and that leaves us with the black, okay, being our last channel. So let's say if we were to print this, normally when you print, 
um, me find my channel to print with. And of course, this would all have to be converted to half tones. You see, you still got all of that down there that's ugly. That's why I don't want to use this. That's why I want it to be nice and crisp. But um, normally we print and we would print yellow first. Okay. So we'll go yellow. Okay, there's the yellow. And magenta, blue. And then we put the black on. Now that black would cover up a lot of uh, a lot of this garbage that we see, so that's why a lot of people would will go ahead and print it. But it's a, it's a lot of garbage, okay? But once you print the black on top of all of that, that black would cover it up. I don't like to print like that, so. I'm going to go in and we're going to vectorize this and make it nice and clean and then uh, re-bitmap it. So I'm going to convert it to black and white. And let's see what I've got here. Put this in two spans, so two colors, so I can span out on this. Okay, notice we're going to lose the wings, but we can go back and we can do something about that. Also, this area here, we're going to lose that shading. We can go back and put that shading in. Now, we could get those wings if we were to go in and make that really, really dark. We could probably catch some of those wings, but we're going to go in and lose all of this, and that's going to be ugly. So you got to choose sometimes. We're going to choose to lose the wings. And we're going to take this. Exit. Let's save it. It's going to take us back over to Corral. I'm going to look at it. Let's go in and let's do a trace on it. Just going to trace this line art. We're going to reduce it because we did make it 600 DPI. Okay. Okay, so we finished uh, tracing that and looks okay, hopefully. Let's go ahead and close that. Let's delete the background and move that over here. Go to view, look at it in wireform form, make sure everything is how we want it. Now we got all of this little extra here that we're gonna have to get rid of. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Let's see here. Okay. Okay. So I want to remove all of this noise here. I'm doing, just going to do this number. This is the quickest way to do this. There's a lot of ways to do this, but this way is a little quick. Oh, 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 oh. That's not what I want to do. Should have used another shape. Let's see here. Let's use the smart shape tool. Uh, Smart shape tool that. Uh, where is it? I must not have it selected on here or something. 
sonheira. Copos, customers, my shape starting to move up, petal. And I need my mouse. I don't see that smart shape tool anywhere. What am I working in? This is 20 uh, X7. Should be a smart shape tool here. Smart drawing, there it is. Okay. So it's under the three point curve. It's under the Beezer tool. So let's go back and see if I can find it again. So over here, there it is. Okay. So I'm going to go from there, go straight down, go across, go back up. Look how jiggled and jagged that is. Now, wasn't that easy? I converted that over really, really fast. Take that little smart shape that I just built right there. Y'all see it? I'm going to go back and go back. Okay. I'm just going to make that white. Okay, and then I'm just going to... I bring that up to there and bring it over a little bit. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, that looks good. Let's just make the outline on it white too. Now you don't even see it. Okay. Now that's pretty good. Okay, so now we've got to regroup this thing and trace it one more time. Okay. So let's just group this here. Let's take it here. Let's convert this to a black and white bitmap. And then we're going to trace it. My daddy always said there's more than one way to kill a mockingbird. So let's see here. What we're going to do. There we go. We got it. Traced it out. Let's trace it out again. And let's go here and let's do another trace. And I told y'all this was going to be a quick video, right? Okay. <laughs> so let's see here. You got to take time to learn how to do this type of stuff. Most of y'all already know how to do this type of stuff, but would you have a thought that you could go in and use that tool? and do that and remove that a little bit. You gotta go in and use these tools in Corel Draw and remember them. Okay, so I'm gonna show you another little quick and easy tool. So now that we've got this, let's ease in on it and let's see if this is smooth. Now you see how jagged that is? This is another tool that a lot of people don't use, okay? This is a smooth tool. It's like magic. Look at it. It's just whoop. Just ease it on through your design. Look at that. It's like, whoop. Oh, thank you, Latana. You're welcome, Kisa. Let's go in and let's go. Let's see. I made this a little bit big. I'm going to go back and make it to fit. And I'm just going to just take this over the whole little thing. And there we go. Okay. Should be pretty smooth now. Okay, that's just a little trick in Corel Draw that a lot of people don't know about. So now it's pretty smooth. I'm pretty happy with it. I'll just go ahead and work with it. Now let's go ahead and let's get to the good part. Let's start doing this thing. We should be just a few minutes from being done. Arrange it. We're going to ungroup all. Now we've got it ungroup. We know that there's something there. Let's delete that. We know that there's probably something there. And there's probably something there. You can always go in and check and see what you're working with by here, okay? So now let's go in. We're going to start adding in our colors. And then once we add in our colors, we'll be able to go in and we'll trace that butter. The uh, Why do I want to call that a butterfly? We'll trace those wings. It's just so pretty. It just looks like a butterfly to me. I don't know why, but... Okay. So let's get this show on the road. Let's go in, let's select a color, and we'll just select 
any color of yellow or we could go over here and we could use this little dropper and that would show us a color and then we could drop use that and then we'll just use make everything the same color okay now of course that's not a Pantone color and I don't want to use a color that's not a Pantone color so what I want to do is for this little job I'm going to make sure that all of my colors are Pantone colors because when I get ready to go in and I separate this stuff I don't want to be doing any extra work so let's see I'm going to use that one it really doesn't matter because I'm going to drop the color of ink in it that I want anyway so let's just yep, 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 yep. what did we do there let's just go back and oh that was that's supposed to be that black so I'm going to leave that white right now so that I remember to go back in and mess with it but all those other little places let's just go in and let's change that yellow to yellow where it's supposed to be yellow Take that there. Ba 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 that book I would just leave probably just half tone that butterfly I mean how I keep calling that thing a butterfly probably just half tone the bubble bee colors uh, bumblebees colors and let's just select all of that and bam okay now let's give this a once over what else do we need okay we need those little Maybe call those little stingers or something. Let's see, there we go. Okay, so this thing is starting to look good. Okay, so we've got all of that now. Okay, it's gonna get better. It's gonna get better. Now, I'm gonna take all of this black here, and I'm going to lock it. Take this. And lock it, take this, and lock it. Okay. Now there should not be. Oh, I need to lock this white too. I'm just going to lock everything. And a good way to have did this was to have locked everything and then unlocked just the part that I wanted to use, right? But no. I have to do things the, the opposite way. So, I think I should have everything locked now. So, okay. And this, let's turn that back to white because we got to go in and do a little something with it. And we're going to lock it too. So, now we should be able to select this whole thing. And when I select it, hopefully. I only have the bumblebee color. Okay, almost, not quite. Go back and do that again. So, I need to lock that and lock that. And then I think I got it on. still got eyeballs. So I'm just going to go back. I'm just going to keep on doing this till I get it right. Take that. And the two eyeballs, I'm just going to grab them together. And click up. Let's do that again. The two eyeballs. And lock them. Now let's see. Is there anything that I can select there? Okay. Now, here we go. Okay. Let's see here. Let me just move that over. Open this up. You guys know about working with layers? Let's see. Right now, everything in Corel is on one layer. 
So let's see here. Let's go in. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Take this here and select it all again. Got it selected. Gonna move it. Make sure that it's selected, and it is. Got it selected. We're gonna edit, copy it. Okay. And then we're gonna do a new layer, and this is gonna be called the color. Okay. So now we're on this B color layer. Yep. Enter. Okay. That's the layer that we're working on. It's B color. And we're going to edit. We're going to paste that on that layer. Now when we hide this layer, that's gone. Okay? So and I'll show you that it's gone because I'm going to select all of this stuff here. Okay? And let's say that I just deleted that. Now, if I click on the B layer, oh, everything is there. Okay? The uh, thing is, this little bit would have to go arrange it and take it to the back. And order to the back. Okay, arrange order to the front. Okay. So we got a problem there. Which is going to mean that if we print uh, let's see, black da 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 bring that to the front of the page. Have to put that lip which is supposed to be in there somewhere. Um i got to go back to layer 1 to address that. So that lip that's there, we would have to print that on top. Okay? Uh, which means, which would be fine because we're going to do the black all at one time anyways. Okay? So we could put that, put the black on a layer by itself. Um, and we would mask all of this off. So we could just go in and do different layers your yellow on one layer, this on one layer, that on one layer. Um, let's see here. Let me go back. But for the purpose of what I'm doing, I'm not going to worry about it. Put that back there, okay? Because I'm not actually going to use this B layer. But I'm going to hide layer 1, and I'm going to show you the B layer. Okay. Now, on this B layer, I'm going to take it. And I'm going to make it a half tone image now. Okay. So when I half tone that, let me look at the stripes in the bumblebee before I do that. So I'm going to go back to this one layer and take that layer off. Oh, okay. So here go the stripes over here. So it's kind of going from dark on this side over into light. Okay, let's take layer one off, show you layer two again, and select this layer, and let's go from dark to light. Um, edit the fill, and take this layer here. Well, actually be pretty cool. Okay. So I'll show you what this is going to look like. And then don't forget I'll go back in and put that mouth on the front at the very end. You see that? So you can play with this and make that um, looks like the hands here are dark and the hands over here are darker and then lighter. So we're going to go in go back take that off, go back over here. Right now I'm just playing y'all. Okay? I'll select everything and go back over here to this field and I'm going to change this color here to a really light yellow and a lighter than that. 
I like to deal with this. So change that to a very light yellow. And then on this end, on this end, okay, so on this end, I'm going to select this color. And uh, I may use this dropper. I want it to be a little darker. That's too dark. Oh, did I did the wrong? Touch the wrong dropper. Blah 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 blah. Let's go back in here. Actually, let's take this dropper and come down off in there. That might give me what I want. That looks a little dark for me, also. Still gotta convert this over to half tone, so. A lot of times when we play with this stuff, I'll go there. Okay. On that B. Okay. So I've got this B now. And let me just show layer one. It's starting to come out pretty much like I want it. I might want to go a little bit darker or whatnot with half tones so I can have some really, really good half tones in there. So I'll go back and just keep doing it until I get it how I want it to be. Um, so I'm going to go back and do it just one more time. Y'all see that it's just not that easy to do stuff, even for me, especially without a mouse. Go in and I want to take those half tones. I want my half tones to be really, really dark. Don't forget, I'm going to drop whatever color of ink in here that I want to use. So don't trip, okay? On it not being perfect. Okay. Now that's what I want to work with. Now it's a little bit darker here on screen than it is over there, but like I said, I'm going to drop my half tones in. It's going to be real pretty once we actually go in and do it. I'm going to show you how to do your half tone from this point. Okay, and then I'm going to convert it back, but this is just to show you how to do that half tone. Now let me go in. I'm going to do a new layer. I'm going to call this my half tone uh, B because that's the layer that I'm going to print and left the H off of there, but you guys get it, okay? So let's take off layer one. Let's take, this is my layer that I'm using just to show you guys. I'm going to edit it. I'm going to copy it. Then I'm going to go to this layer. Take that layer off. I'm going to paste it here on this layer. Okay. Now that I've got this layer pasted, what we have to do is we've got to convert this over, okay, to a half tone. So I'm going to go up to bitmap, and I'm going to go convert it to a bitmap. Convert it to a grayscale bitmap. Okay. That's going to grayscale it. And then I'm going to go in. I'm going to go bitmap mode. And I'm going to do this as a black and white half tone. Okay. Let's go here. And I'm going to half tone this. Okay. And then this is where I would choose what I want my half tones to look like and I want them to be round and I'm going to go at a um, lines per inch 45 well for this half tone I want this half tone to be pretty big so I'll go at 25 on my on my dots okay and I'll go 45 over here okay now that just made my half tones. So that's my half tone dots, okay? That I got. So now my half tones screen is ready to go. And sometimes I can show you this if I go make that black. And let's see if I can do this. Sometimes I remember how to do this and sometimes I can't I'm getting old like that black and whoop, 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 whoop. Just going to fit the page and where is that image and then invert that to the yellow see if you can see it you see you can see it well actually this is gonna be this isn't gonna be a um 
going to be, uh, what is this going to be, this background, it's going to be, it's going to be a gray shirt with a white background, and that's not going to show you because I got the, I'm going to have that dot on there, uh, let's see if I was, but if I was to make it a white shirt, then you would be able to see it, but you get the idea, at least I hope you do, see, so that's your, that's your half tone in your B. You can go in, you can make those circles as big or as small as you want them to be. Um, I did it at 25 to show you guys. I would probably end up doing that at about, let me look at it. I'd probably end up doing it actually at about a like 45. Let's see, half tone B, take that half tone B off. Uh, make that yellow. Yeah, I'd probably half tone. End up half toning it at about uh, uh, 45. So let's go in and just undo all of this. Oh, not those layers, just the half tone layer. Undo my half tone layer. And that's the back there. Okay. So now that I'm back there, I'm going to go in and I'm going to half tone again. Take it and show you how to make the half tones really, really small to where you barely see it. Um, da -da -da -da. Bitmap, color mask. Da -da -da -da. Sometimes I forget what I'm doing. Okay, I'm converting this over to a grayscale. That's right. So there's the grayscale. Where is the. Da -da -da -da. My mode and oh, let's change that to 25 degrees. Sorry, y'all, I forgot this is one color. Let's go in and change that to 25 degrees. That looks much, much better. Okay, so that's going to be our halftone screen right there. So our yellow is going to go from you know, light to dark. Okay, so we're going to actually use this for the halftone screen, okay? Let's go back over to, let's take that off so that's done. Let's go back over to layer one. The only thing that you need to do now, if you want to make this a halftone, you can. Um, for this little bumblebee, I would just take this. Okay, first of all, i got to unlock it. I would take that, do the same thing that I did before. Um, take it here, go in and make that color black. Um, okay, and then you could probably do like a circular color here, and then just span that out um, so that you could get what you're looking for and actually let's go reverse let's do this with the black okay and let's do the other end with the white okay okay and then let's do something like this and let's put more white in there. No, 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 no. Less white, more white in there than black. Okay. And we could do this one. We could do this one. And do this one. That'll be okay. And then I would lock this. I would take this black and white, put it on a whole nother, um, a whole nother uh, layer, like I did the other one. I'm not going to do it in the video because the video is getting pretty long. Do the do the save the black and this here together, and then go in and lock it. That's one one uh, screen. You can half tone this a little bit and then lock it in with that with that layer. If I want to do this, the book, 
and make the book have some shading, I do the same thing, okay? And the only thing that I'm going to show you now is how to go in, use your Beezer tool, and when you use that Beezer tool, how to trace over this image. So I'm just going to go in, go do this in a wire format. Let's find that tool. La, 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 la. There it is, and actually, I want to use the B spine tool. Okay, the Beezer tool will, will let you go straight, but this B spine tool it'll curve and do all kinds of little cool stuff for you. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start here. The halftone layer is locked or invisible. What layer am I on? I don't want, I'm not on the half. Okay. I should be on layer one. Okay. And we'll just undo these and just go to layer one. I thought I was on layer one. Let's try that again. Okay, let me view this here normal. Let's see what layer this is on. This is on layer one. That's crazy. I do not want me to trace over this on this layer. Okay, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to create another layer and do another layer and this is going to be the wing layer okay and I'm going to take this edit copy this open up the wings layer take layer one off on the wings layer oh and I want that wings layer to print edit and I'm going to paste it here Okay, now I'm on the layer that I want to be on. Okay. Now, notice that I did not change the size of this uh, because I'm going to need this to be the correct size that I want it to be when I get ready to join this to the uh, the vector that I've created. So, arrange, da -da 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 -da, group, da -da -da, I want to view it, view it, view it, wireframe. Okay, and I'm going to probably want to lock this so that it does not move. It won't let me lock it. Okay, let's go back in and let's try this tool. Now look at this tool. You can just click and go up. This is better done if you've got a pen. Like I said, today I don't have a pen or anything. I'm just using uh, the mouse on the laptop which I don't like to use. Okay. Go around and we're just going to click. Keep clicking, clicking, clicking. You can do this pretty fast. It will curve with you. Most people don't even know. Um, 90 9.9% of the people that you do this with will never know that you went in and redrew their art. Um, but I always tell them and charge them a really, really good fee to go in and do something like this. Um, for most of my customers now you see if I bring that there that wants to connect that okay so it connected that I'm just going to come here come over over go up go, up, go on around can't really see this too good so come over, come around, 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 
they come up and somewhere in here I'm going to connect that. Did that connect? Whoop, whoop, whoop. Let's see. So that should be connected. And I don't think it is. Hope it's not. Okay. So what I got to do. Oh, wrong tool. Go back to this V spine tool. And I'm going to zoom in here so that I can see because I've got to connect these nods. And this should have connected here. This should be one solid piece, and it's still not one solid piece. Oh. Oh, come on now. Okay, so we've got this image, and you see that that's not connected. So I'm going to go in. An easy way to do this, I'm going to select it all, and then I'm going to weld it together. Okay, so now let's weld it. I'm going to go back in, and I'm going to view it enhance. And I've got this little thingy here. Okay, so what I'm going to take this and move it and put it on this other butterfly. Okay. What did I, oh, I got to copy it. So, I'm going to edit, copy it. I forgot it's on another layer. And let's go to, to layer one. Edit and paste it on layer one, and then move it here like this. Okay, so we've connected everything, and I'm just gonna move it to where I want it to be. So there it is. Now I'm gonna take this and I want that outline to be pretty thick. I'm going to look at what it was over. Because I'm making that blue now. So, maybe not that thick. Maybe I'll go with three points. Or three points there. Okay. So there we go. We got that. And I'm going to make that a blue on that outline and you see how that did that so what I'm going to do is go in right click it and turn that to blue and we're going to drop this up under uh, behind this so you can't see it but when we tried to do that feel it did that so what we're going to do is just go ahead and click here we hit right curve because there was some type of curve in there that I must have made. And let's view this here in a wire form. And I don't see it. So, let's go back and view it in enhanced form. Something I did not catch. See, there is something there. Okay. Let's go back and I'll tell you what I'm going to do here. Select all of this. I thought I had. Let's combine that back. Okay. Now 
let's weld it again and let's see if we change it still not giving me what I want so I've got something for that too so I'll go in here and arrange convert that to an object and let's convert it to an object okay now let's see what we can do with it the deal. Same deal. Okay. So when Corel gives me this type of help, what I do is I just go in and I'll convert this thing to a bitmap and make it a black and white. Should it convert, change those colors over. And then I'm just going to trace it. And get what I want that way. Okay. That's not what I wanted. So let me convert this these colors to black. Okay. Now I'll go in and bitmap it and trace it, and it should give me what I want. Going to do an outline trace, and I'm not going to merge the same colors. I'm trying to undo that before that did that. Trace it, outline it. Okay, so I didn't get really good results with converting that over to an object. Okay, there we go. I got something on the inside. Okay, so this inside here I need to delete. Okay, now I've got this. And what I'm going to do is, since I have this, I deleted whatever that was there on the inside and I'm just going to use the smart fill tool and I'm going to fill this okay and this is supposed to be what like a blue or so in there on that fill okay and we don't need that outline. Let's say none. Okay. So I've got this blue feel, which is this, okay? And go here. Hit on none and take that outline off. But I know I've got the feel. And let me look at the original image. Uh, which is a really, really, really light blue. So go here. And let's do this number. So it's really, 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 really light. And let's go from the bottom and go up. Okay. Let's see how far up it's going to let me go to make that white. I don't want to go there. I want to span out there. Okay. And I could add a third color into this if I wanted to. Um, on this range, but I'm going to leave that at that, and that should be pretty fine. I could also go in over here. Span this up a little bit. Into there. Blah, 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 blah. Let's see, that white was at the bottom or at the top? White's at the bottom and it's got just a little bit of blue at the top. So let's go with that one. Do the same thing to this one. Take 
this uh, black off of there. So do no line. Okay, I've got black under there. How did I get that registration color under there? I do not know. So let's see here. I must have clicked on something. So I'm going to take that, even that back up. And we're just going to go in here. Oh, my mind is gone, 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 gone. I'm supposed to be doing a transparency. Okay, so here's the transparency tool, and we need to go the other direction, and we need to take this up. Okay, up some more. Let's take a look at this little butterfly here. Zoom out to the page so that we can see it. It's starting to look pretty good. If you take this other little bit off here, then you can see. And I'm running low, y'all, so I'm going to have to go. I don't have a charger. I would arrange this here. I would just go in and do the same thing, half tone this. And actually, before I half tone this, go in and on this Cheyenne I'm going to make it a little bit darker okay um, if you just hit plus it'll kind of darken it up a little bit let's take this dropper and get that color there and see if it'll okay now I'm going to take it and I'm going to arrange this and just order this to the back of the page. The whole thing. Arrange it and order it to the back of the page. And it's not going anywhere. Okay, because I've got so many duplicates on there. That's why. I'm going to select the whole thing, change it, rip it, oh, da, 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 back of the page, come on computer, don't go dead on me, don't go dead, um, am I on another layer, I'm actually on a wings layer, y'all, I'm sorry, um, <laughs> if I want to see this, I would go edit, copy, okay, so, da, 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 range, edit, copy it, go back to my regular layer, okay, and delete that, delete that, on layer one, yep I am, okay, now go edit, and paste it, okay, half tone layer is locked, half tone layer, I don't want the half tone layer. I want this layer, layer one. I want to take. Okay, my phone, my computer's gonna go dead. I'll be back. Okay, let me show y'all what I did real quick. So what I did is I just moved. It was like this. I just grabbed that layer and moved that layer. See, it's up and move that layer below. So now that layer is below this uh, the bumblebee. So I'm basically finished uh, creating this bee. I go in, I clean this up. Now this is ready for me to convert it over, and all of that good stuff. I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna save this file real quick before my computer goes dead. And uh, bumblebee, bumblebee. Okay. And save it on my OneDrive. There. Bam. Okay. I'm going to go back in and do a little something to this little layer. Um, but basically, it's ready. It's clean work. And um, it's ready to be printed. 
it's color separated, all that type of stuff. Um, only thing we have to do is go back in. We would change this layer out with the other layer. I'll go in in a little bit and probably show you how to um, do the underbase and all of that type of stuff. I'll talk to you later. Bye.